Today, we're going to be building a second LFO into our Wirkstatt. For this project, we're going to need a 1.5K resistor, a 150 ohm resistor, a 10K potentiometer, a 10 microfarad capacitor, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, a 555 IC timer chip, or integrated circuit, our breadboard, a screwdriver, and our jumper cables. First, take your 555 chip and place it in the center of your breadboard. When you read a 555 IC, look for the small circle in the top left-hand corner. That's pin 1. Count down 1, 2, 3, 4 on that side, and then go over in a U pattern to the other side to read 5, 6, 7, 8 up the right-hand side of the chip. We'll be using the 555 in its A-stable mode, which will provide us with a square wave that we can modulate the frequency on, similar to the square wave on our LFO. This can also be used in a flip-flop fashion or monostable mode. After our 555, timer chip is placed in the center of our breadboard, take your 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and plug the negative end into pin 1. The negative end on the capacitor is delineated by a thick white line. Pin 1 on the 555 is actually our ground, so at this time it would be a good chance to get ground off of our Wirkstatt. An easy way to get ground on the Wirkstatt is just attaching a jumper cable to one of the internal or external screws on the chassis or the PCB. Moving down the 555 timer, we actually don't connect pin 2 to anything, so we'll move on to pin 3. On pin 3, take your 150 ohm resistor and place it running to an empty spot on your breadboard. Pin 4 on the 555 is where we need to send 5 volts. For this, I'm just going to pull 5 volts from our EG out. Now, moving over to pin 5, on the bottom right hand side of the 555, take your 0.1 microfarad capacitor and plug one leg into that pin. Now, take your 10K potentiometer and place it in an open spot on your breadboard. This pot is going to control the frequency of our LFO the same way the rate knob on the Wirkstatt does. Pin six of our 555 needs to go into this 10K potentiometer. Take a smaller jumper cable and run from pin six on the 555 timer into one of the outside pins on your 10K potentiometer. These pins are typically known as A or B. Next, we need to take our 1.5K resistor and connect pins 7 and 8 on our 555. Run another small jumper from pin 7 of the 555 to the inside pin of your 10K potentiometer. This is typically known as W or the wiper. We'll need to connect ground between our two capacitors. Take another small jumper, run from pin 1 of the 555 to the other pin of your ceramic capacitor that's not connected to the 555. Our last small jumper needs to go from the positive end of our 10 microfarad capacitor into the jumper cable that's connected to pin 6 on the 555 at the 10K potentiometer. Now we've completed our breadboard circuit, so we can run a jumper cable from the 150 ohm resistor into any CV in on our Wirkstatt. You'll notice as I turn the knob on the 10K potentiometer, the modulation of our 555 LFO frequency goes up or down. You can actually get some pretty interesting beat patterns by running two LFOs simultaneously. You can also use this LFO to modulate things other than the filter, like the VCO. To have a little more control, I'm going to use a 1 mega ohm potentiometer and bridge between the 150 ohm resistor and our signal that we're sending into our Wirkstatt. As you turn the potentiometer, you'll be able to hear the modulation change. 
This works the same way as our amount potentiometer is built into our Bergstadt. If we repatch over to the VCO EXPN, you can hear that it oscillates between a low and a high note. We can use that in conjunction with our own LFO and modulate the frequency as well. All parts lists, fritzing models, and schematics are available online at vix.workshop.com.